Good morning, Mrs. Hammond. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Hammond. Board, the man you big, but they're not God Almighty, even in this industry. I'm doing good to find out. Christiane, I'll wait inside, will you? See you in a minute. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hammond, have you thought of the resources you need? Men, machines, and money. I know what's needed, and it's not your help, thank you. You don't seem to realize there's a big organization like I... I don't give a damn how big you are. I don't care if you offer me a directorship and 10,000 shares. I'm going to develop the Apollo Bob and market it, and I'll do it on my own. But if it fails, it was a good invention. I don't think any more meetings will be necessary, gentlemen. Mr. Merton will show you out. You're making a big mistake, Richard. At least that's what I think. If you've thought of anything, David, it's the first time. Richard, I want to talk to you. I'm sorry I didn't get home last night. I was held up. I'm very busy. I didn't want to come here, but it seems the only place where I can talk to you. Now, if you're angry, I... Hammond? Fit it up the Apollo test, sir, as you ordered, but... Good. Well, as I told you, the vapor density hasn't been checked and... I'll be over right away. I must insist, sir. I can't take responsibility if... Look, I'm wanted in the lab. I suggest we have lunch in half an hour. Miss Hopkins! Richard, this is important. I want to settle it now. Now, what is so important? Yes, sir? Have these copied and sent off this afternoon. The enclosures are in the file. Yes, sir. Richard. Look, I'm sorry, darling. Yes? Oh, David, entertain Christiane, will you? I should be in the laboratory for the next half hour. See you at lunch. Drink, Christiane? No, thank you. If he goes ahead with the Apollo on his own, he'll break the firm. And we'll all suffer, not only him. I've tried to make him see sense, but of course I'm only his partner. He doesn't listen to me. We have a lot in common. Anything wrong? You tell Richard that I'm not staying for lunch. Why, uh, things worse than usual? I've had enough. I'm going to leave him. You mean it this time? Yes. I made up my mind. And if I were you, I'd do the same before it's too late. Richard, can you hear me? Stay with me. I feel better when you're here. Of course I'll stay. They say I'm blind. Yes, darling. I feel so tired, Christiane. You must rest for a long time. No. I shall fight. I've always fought. I shall fight now. <laughs> Two dots above, one bottom left. M E N, men. Even men. One dot above, two underneath. Like a small L. But it's not an L. Now, what word does that make? Lost the place. Damn! <laughs> Richard. Oh. Oh, you've broken the vase. Who put it on my desk? I did. I thought you liked some flowers in the room. Well, you might have told me. I'm sorry. I must know exactly what everything is in this room. I count on that. 
What's that noise? I'm picking up the broken glass. A little to your left, darling. I've got the lighter here. You do that very well now. I've got a check for you to sign. For Harrods. Car here yet? I told Clem to have the car here by 11. It must be that by now. Well, it's five minutes to two, Brad. What do you want it for? I'm going to the factory. Richard, darling, you're not strong enough to go yet. I must find out what's going on. Six months wasted in hospital. Time the Apollo bulb was on the market. Dr. Palmer says you must take it easy. Well, I promised to go down to Cornwall for a month, haven't I? Yes, a month, maybe more. Nonsense, I'm perfectly fit. I'll be back at work for the beginning of September. Come in. The car is here, sir. Right with you, Clem. Richard, please don't go. Now, look, Chris, let's get this straight once and for all. I am not helpless. I'm not the type to settle down to basket weaving, thank you very much. All I'm saying is that in your condition... It would help if you didn't go on all the time about my condition. I'm not a complete wreck. You're not holding anything back from me, are you? Are you? You're so much harder on yourself than anybody else is. I want to know if there's anything Dr. Palmer told you that I don't know. No, no, certainly not. It's just that you need more rest, that's all. And I don't think that you ought to go to the factory. It's no good arguing with me, Chris. I have to go. Very well. Just here, sir. Wait here, Clem. Well, keep trying. I want to speak to him most urgent. Richard, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same question, couldn't I? I only meant I didn't expect to see you here. I'm not dead, you know. I'm coming back. Well, of course you are. I'm sure you haven't been idle all this time, David. I know my own desk, thank you. What's the position with the Apollo bulb? The Apollo? We're working on it. Fine, fine. What's the maximum glass temperature? It's in the file. Good. Well, let's have it. I got Miss Hopkins. I can do it. Miss Hopkins, Help. bring in the Apollo file, please. What are you nervous about? Richard, are you really determined to go ahead with the Apollo? You're damn right I am. I don't intend to spend six more months going over ifs and buts and maybes. Well, it's not fair to suggest that I've done nothing in your absence. I've done all that. Oh, Mr. Hammond. Oh, it's all right, Miss Hopkins. It's so good just to see you here again, sir. Thank you. That'll be all, Miss Hopkins. No, Miss Hopkins. You can tell Feldman I'll be down to check on the lab before I go. But, sir... Now, it's all right. It's not going to go off my face a second time. Yes, sir. Richard, listen to me. We haven't the equipment or the finance to manufacture and promote this bulb properly. We're too small. You're too I... small, you mean, not me. We simply can't afford it. The bank's on my neck. Every... I don't give a damn about the banks. I know what I'm doing. Good heavens, man, we've got a bulb brighter than fluorescent. Double the life of anything on the market. And we can retail it at the same price. But the group's... We'll launch a huge campaign. Take time on TV. Thousands of posters, the works. I tell you, we'd be cutting our own throats. I tell you to shut up because you don't understand. You're a coward, David, a coward. Richard, what's the matter? Can I help? Hey, you have got some pills. Here. You want some water? No, oh, thanks. You see, Dr. Palmer was right. You've got to take it easy. Francis, just a dizzy spell. I'll be all right. I'm glad you're going to have that month in Cornwall, anyway. Well, if we've got to rest somewhere, it might as well be my own place. I know every inch of it. Yes? Mr. Burton, your call from Dr. Palmer is true. Cancel it, please. But Mr. Burton, you said... I said cancel it. Dr. Palmer? Yes, a purely personal matter. I, I haven't been feeling too well lately. Nothing serious. I see. Well, let's get down to the lab. You can start seeing the publicity people tomorrow. Report to me in Cornwall over the weekend. 
As if Dr. Palmer thinks you're fit enough. How are the mighty fallen? Max. Well, you might have come to see me in hospital. Richard. Did you really want me to visit you in hospital? No, I didn't. I wish you didn't see me now, like this. Those glasses suit you. You look like a president traveling incognito. Max, tell me the truth. Am I badly scarred? Of course not. As a matter of fact, you look better than I feel. Yeah. I'm sure you didn't come here just to check on my appearance. No, I came to borrow money as usual. Are you surprised There's me? a little blonde in Brighton who's costing oh, me a subsidized another affair of yours, is that it? Why not? Isn't that what an elder brother's for? I thought you had a job now, playing the piano in some nightclub, brother. Yes, I have, but regular hours bore me. Can't you stick at anything? Yes, whiskey and women. Damn it, you made me feel better anyway. How much do you want this time? I can wait till I visit you in Cornwall. Oh, Christiane, you are going to invite me down, aren't you? Of course, you must come down, Max. We'll be very pleased to see you. We are ready to leave, darling. It'll be nice to stay at White House again. You know, this painting is one of David's better efforts. Nonsense. Trees are all wrong. Well, you've got to allow him some artistic license. You flying down as usual? I don't see any reason for giving up the plane because I can't fly myself. Clem's a first-rate pilot. Well, how's he behaving? Clem's all right. He learned his lesson when he was kicked out of the Air Force. Come in. The car's ready, madam. You'll be right out, Janet. Janet! Sir? If you have any messages to give, give them to me. I'm only blind, not deaf and dumb. Yes, sir. Oh, don't be hard on her, Richard. She's quite pretty. He doesn't know her place. Well, perhaps I could show it to her. Oh, really, Max? I don't see why you had to get rid of Mary while I was in hospital. She was getting too old. She'd been with us for years. It was up to me to decide if she had to go. Come to the airfield with us, Max. Sorry, old boy, I've got a date. You're going to be bored in Cornwall. I don't know. Perhaps not. What's the delay, Clem? Why don't we start? I'm just waiting for the light from control, sir. What's the weather? Not bad. Clem wouldn't fly if there was any risk. Better have one of these pills now, darling. No, I don't want any pills. Please. We're off, sir. Should be over the church now, following the line of the canal. Your memory is very good. My memory can still see. Almost all I've got now. Almost. Richard, darling. Richard, uh, wake up. We are here. <laughs> You've been sleeping like a baby all the way. There's none of you really happy except when I am asleep. Damn. I forgot there were three steps. Here, let me do that. Nothing's changed, darling. Everything is exactly as it used to be. Chris? 
Yes. Schlein's dead. I know, darling. I had it disconnected. Well, I was just going to call the factory. That's why I had it disconnected. I didn't want. Well, you'd get onto the post office and have them connected up again. At once. my chair. Just where it always was. A little to your right. You see? You won't have any difficulty finding your way around. It's good to be back. Silly about that step, wasn't it? Richard? Darling, what on earth are you doing? Looking for the plug for my razor. You're looking on the wrong side of the basin. Here, let me do it. Here you are. I could have sworn it was the other side. Darling, why on earth should you remember where a plug is? It was not the plug. I don't like to think my memory's playing me tricks. Rich, please don't talk like that. After all, you never even slept in this room before the accident. Oh, um, I came to ask if you'd like to go for a drive. It's lovely outside. Oh, and have everybody in the village staring at me? No, thank you. Richard, how often do I have to tell you that you are not badly scarred? You don't have to hide your face behind glasses. I wish I could believe you, Chris. People seem frightened of me. That girl, Janet, for instance. You are not ugly, I swear it. Well, maybe not to you, but... Look, I'll be down in a minute, but I, I really don't feel up to a drive, thank you. Aren't you, Sally, eh? <laughs> Remember me, don't you? Huh? What have you been doing to you, Sally? You're all skin and bone. Janet! Janet! Yes, sir. This cat. What's it like? What color is it? It's a tabby, sir. It's not black? No, sir. Just an ordinary tabby, sir. It's lost its tail, hasn't it? Yes, sir. Get out of here! I don't want that cat near me ever again! Stupid girl. Just seen her chasing Sally across the garden. Sally? The cat from the village shop. You sure it was Sally? It's all right now, sir. The cat was... Janet, will you please tell Mrs. Hammond what sort of a cat you were chasing? It was a tabby cat, madam. Oh, don't be absurd. Of course it was Sally. Sally was black and there was certainly nothing wrong with her tail. That would be all, Janet. Yes, madam. Sally was run over the day before we came. I didn't want you to know. So when I saw the other cat, I... Lie to spare my feelings. Well, it's a rather strong way of putting it. Well, let's say you distorted the truth a little. As one does with people who are gravely ill. Only I'm not gravely ill and I don't need to be humoured. Richard, I hoped I wouldn't have to tell you this, but you must understand why I don't want you to hurry back to work. After the explosion, we were terribly worried. More than you know. For a while, the doctors thought, well, they were afraid you might be affected mentally. Just what did they decide? You're not. Thank God. At 
least of department thinks that given care and... Well, he said that I should never contradict you. Everything around you was to be exactly as you expected it to be. Exactly as it had been before. Pour me a scotch, will you? Not too much water. It's a pity you didn't warn Janet. She could have told me the cat was black and I'd have swallowed any explanation about a missing tail. Look, you've got to try and understand what it's like for me. My world has changed. It's, it's black. It's a world of voices and smells. I don't want to be made a fool of, Chris. I didn't mean to do that. I need your eyes. You see, what frightens me is there's no longer any difference between true and false. As long as I thought that cat was Sally, it was Sally. If I can't be sure of you, it's the end of everything. You've got to promise never to lie to me again, even to please me. I promise. Not bad, eh, Clem? Blind man who can pick a red rose? It's white, sir. Rubbish. Roses on the archway are red. It's white, sir. White? Could have sworn they were red. Anything the matter, Mr. Hammond? It certainly is. This car. Why was the garage bill 50 pounds last month? Mrs. Hammond mentioned it this morning. The car's hardly been running. But it can't have been as much as that. Well, it sir. was. Never had a bill as big as that when I could see what was going on. Are you calling me a thief, Mr. Hammond? Nobody's calling you anything yet, Clem. Just think you ought to watch your step. Now look, Mr. Hammond. I'm not a complete fool. We both know what would happen to me if I got into trouble with the police again. I'm warning you, that's all. I may be blind, but I still want to know everything that's going on around here. Maybe there are others who should warn first. That's enough. In future, I want to know everything that's done to the car and the plane. Understand? I'll see that you know, sir. Right. Richard, darling. It's Max. Max? Yes. He must have cut short his engagement at the club. Well, they cut it short, more likely. Well, you don't look very pleased to see me. Of course I am. Just the price, that's all. Well, I thought by now you'd both be bored to death with a simple life. So here I am. Broke and unemployed, I expect. As usual. Well, the old place hasn't changed a bit. Oh, I'd better hurry if I'm going to meet David at the station. David? Coming today, is he? What fun. See you, Max, to his room, darling. I'll ask Janet to set another place for dinner. David. Thank you. I'm looking forward to doing some painting while I'm down here, Christiane. Oh, still life, David? Or from the figure? Thank you, Janet. I wonder if she's as good in the pantry as she is in the kitchen. Can't you ever think of anything but sex? Can you? You'd better keep away from Janet, Max. Are you afraid she might not fall for my fatal charm? Well, I don't want to lose a good maid just to satisfy your vanity. Besides, Clem has already got his eye on her. Clem? Now, there would be an interesting item. Jilted chauffeur assaults maid's jaded lover. David, I thought you came down here to discuss some business with Richard. I did, but uh, we can leave it till the morning. If... Oh, no. Now we'll be fine. I've got all the papers next door. Good. Feels like we're in for a storm. I'm sweating like a pig. Nonsense. It's no warmer than usual. Got my briefcase over here. 
First of all, I've got the orders for the new equipment for you to sign. There they are. Have you got a pen? I've got my own pen. You sign here. Strange. What, darling? I could have sworn I smoked. Where do I sign? Yeah. The agency were quite pleased with the slogan I suggested for Apollo. Invite the sun into your home. What's the matter with it? Max is right. Dull as ditch water. Well, perhaps Max can suggest something better. He's always full of ideas. What about, there shall be no other lights before me? There was darkness on the face of the deep. And Hammond said, let there be light. And there was light. And Hammond saw the light, and it was good. That's enough, Max. Actually, I'm all for you in this fight, Richard. I'd like nothing better than to see you kick hell out of your competitors. Is there anything I can do to help? Well, if we ever need a pianist at the works, I've no doubt Richard will get in touch with you. Oh, I don't know. I could always knock you out a good TV commercial. How about this? Apollo, Apollo, lights you all the way. Oh, what fun it is to have a bulb as bright as day. Max, I think you might leave so they can get that business settled. Well, if you must get rid of me, I think I'll run down to the village and see what's happening. I already know what's happening here. Good night, all. <coughs> night, Max. You're tight every night, running after every little tramp he meets. Is he never going to grow up? Oh, why shouldn't he enjoy himself while he's got the chance? He won't have the chance much longer if he goes on the way he is. You know what the doctor said about his heart? Well, hear you talk, you'd think we all had one foot in the grave. What if you don't follow the doctor's orders? Don't nag, Christian. It's bad for Richard. He's tired. Wide awake, actually. We haven't got down to brass tacks yet. All right, I'll leave you to it. Good night, darling. Good night. Don't stay up too late. I won't. Good night, David. Good night. Let's go outside, David. It'll be cooler. All right. Never known it so warm down here. All right, now then. I want a full weekly report on Apollo. All details, you understand? Of course. I hardly expected you'd let me get on with it by myself. Well, let's not go on about that again. Not tonight, please. That smell again. Wish I could place it. Yeah, well, I can place that all right. Why do you have to suck those revolting things? Now, look here, Richard. I'm not a child. I'm not your employee. I'm your partner. All right, all right. Well, let's get on with it. What else you got to tell me? I want to ask you for the last time, and it is the last time, I promise you, to give up the Apollo. You're really frightened, aren't you, David? Very well, I'll make you a promise. I'll give you full responsibility for all decisions at the factory from now on in everything, except the Apollo. Damn it, there's lots of things you can do better than me. Routine, establish things. Thank you. There's a letter here I haven't told you about. More threats. Just listen to it, will you? And then make up your mind. It's from... Pines. It's pine trees. That's what I can smell, pine trees. I'm certain of it. Can't you smell them, David? I'm not sure. Well, you must be able to smell them, too. It's hardly important. Well, of course it is. You know, as well as I do, there aren't any pine trees around here, not for miles. Well, then it can't be pines, can it? it? Must be just something else with a similar smell. Now you mention it, I believe I can smell something. Now don't try and humor me, David. I'm mistaken, that's all there is to it. What did Dr. Palmer say to you that day in the office? You supposed to watch me for signs of insanity? It was a purely personal matter, I told you that. I didn't believe you, did I? Look, are you going to listen to this letter? Oh, take your idiotic letters to the lawyers. What the devil do you think we pay him for anyway? Tell him to threaten back. As for my decision, I've made it. Can't you get that in your thick skull? I've made up my mind and I know what I'm doing. Very well. Good night. And you can tell Dr. Palmer for me he's a bloody fool. There's nothing the matter with me. Nothing.
Who's there? Just going to bed, Mr. Hammond. Good night, sir. Clem, has he been told to watch me too? Perhaps the doctors were right. Maybe my mind has been affected. How else could I have smelt so distinctly something that wasn't there? Was there, I know it. Oh, God. Don't let me go mad. Please don't let me go mad. Come to join me? I've already eaten. Don't talk to me about food. It's black coffee for me this morning. I think they must mix the local brew with strontium 90. You don't look too good yourself. I didn't sleep too well. What is it? Max. Max, do you think my brain could have been damaged by the explosion? Oh, nonsense, Richard. If there was anything wrong with me mentally, if I was slowly going out of my mind, I'd want you to tell me when. It'd be terrible not knowing. You'll be well soon. Get back to the factory. Your employees are probably dreading it already. It's not as easy as I thought it would be. <coughs> tell me. All sorts of things, strange things. My memory, my senses, hearing, smelling, even touching. Things that are wrong that can't be wrong. Max, last night, I went out into the garden. Oh, God! What is it? <coughs> What's wrong? <coughs> Max! It's nothing. It's nothing. I'm all right. I'll go and call the others. No, 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 it's gone now. Too many late nights, I suppose. What were you going to tell me, Richard? Well, forget about it. It's you I'm worried about. You need a specialist. I'll get Christian to call Dr. Palmer. Not for me, thank you very much. I wouldn't let Palmer. What's wrong with Palmer? Don't you trust him? Well, yes, of course. Only you know how I feel about doctors. Any doctor. We're ready to leave, David. Rich is coming with us. Fine. This weather, I find it suffocating. A drive will do you good. That's excellent, David. What is? Another painting of the house, darling. It's very good. Most unusual. I haven't finished it yet. I've had trouble with these shadows here. Mm, you underestimate your talents, David. Mm, the peach tree looks very real, anyhow. Peach tree? Yes, the tree you planted, don't you remember? There are three peaches on it, just ripe for eating, I should say. Purple peaches. How original. Richard has always been fond of peaches. Richard! Are you all right? I... I've got a headache. I... I don't think I'll come after all. But we don't have to go, darling. No, you go without me. I'll be all right. Are you sure? Yes. Richard, would you like me to stay with you? Damn it all, I want to be alone. What the hell do I have to do to make you understand? All right. You think it's all right to leave in?
Damn. Who's that? Me. Didn't hear the car come back? Where are the others? I didn't go. Not my idea of a wild outing. You mean they sent you back to watch me? As a matter of fact, I still don't feel too well. Doesn't usually stop you from going out? Actually, I wanted to talk to you alone about... Money, I suppose. No, it's... Go a... ahead, Max. Help yourself. The checkbook's in the desk. Okay. How much do you want? A hundred quid will see me through. Another of your so-called actress friends, no doubt. No, a debutante this time. She wears blue jeans and works in a coffee bar. I'm heading up in the world. Well, it's a pity you can't act your age, instead of treating every girl you meet as a challenge. Will you sign the check? Or do we start with the lecture? Hey, take it. Go ahead and kill yourself. It's my life I'm getting rid of. Get on my money. That's right. You make it, I spend it. The division of labor in the Hammond family. It's not funny, Max. No, it's not funny. But it's the way you've always wanted it, isn't it? You've never taken me seriously, not for a moment. When I tried to join the company, you laughed in my face. What, you and the business, you've never done an honest day's work in your life. Well, have you? No, maybe I haven't. Maybe I've been too busy living. Living for both of us. While you've given yourself body and soul to the factory. You mean you've been behaving like an irresponsible adolescent? You call that a living? And you've done your best to keep me that way. No one's enjoyed hearing about it more than you. I thought being blind might change you. Make you a human being. Make you realize things that you didn't before. Things that really matter. But you let the world make a fool of you. You make a fool of me too. I? Maybe I'm not so blind or so foolish. How much did you write on that check, Max? Was it 100, or two, or five? Just how much can you make a blind man pay? No, Richard, there are times when I hate your guts. What's the matter with Max, darling? Anything wrong, Richard? Just Max wanting money again. He told me he hated me. What about you, David? That how you feel, too? I... Now, don't be afraid to tell me, David. Max wasn't. I can't hurt you, you know. I'm blind. Richard. How about you, Christiane? What does it feel like to be chained to a blind man for the rest of your life? Would have been better if the explosion had killed me, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Stop it, Richard. Go into my room. <laughs> Max? Who's there? Who is it? What do you want? there. Are you after money? Oh, for God's sake, say something! Hey, puss. Come on. 
Come on, Puss. I won't hurt you. You know what they say, don't you? Only cats and blind men can see in the dark. Max? Max, are you there? Oh, Mr. Hammond, you're up early, sir. Clem, have you seen my brother? No, sir. I think he went out, sir. Well, his bed's not been slept in. Where did he go? I, I, I don't know, sir. Good morning, darling. I'm at the dressing table. Christian. I'm... I'm sorry about yesterday. You know I didn't mean what I said, don't you? I understand. It's just that sometimes I feel so... frustrated. Helpless. And the row I've been having with Max... Where is he, Chris? I must talk to him. Max? Yes. He didn't sleep in his room last night. Has he got some girl down in the village? Well? Max is gone. Gone? Where? Back to town. Well, because of what I said to him, I don't believe it. Richard, you'll have to know sooner or later. But please keep calm. There was an incident last night. Clem found Max with Janet. Max and that girl? Uh, you're not really surprised, are you? You know what Max is like. I thought there was going to be a fight. Clem wanted to call you down, but I wouldn't hear of it. I had quite a job to persuade him not to give notice. My brother dismissed so that my chauffeur can remain? Max knew he was in the wrong. He couldn't face seeing you, so he took his things and left. They must be brought back at once. It's no use, Richard. David can fetch him back. But, do David. I'm in here, just finishing my breakfast. I want to get back to town as soon as possible. Christiane's just been telling me about Max. Oh? I want him brought back here. Is that wise? My own brother, I wasn't even informed or consulted. One way or another, we thought it better. You shouldn't know. You thought it better? Yes, I did. You get in touch with him as soon as you get to town and ask him to come back here. I have a great many things to do, Richard. You do as you're told. I'm not a messenger, boy. Very well. Perhaps as a friend, you'll be kind enough to ask Max to come back here. Please, David. But since it means so much to you, I'll do what I can. I'll wire you when I contact him. Thank you. After all. I better go and pack. Christian? Oh, no, it's Janet, sir. Mrs. Hammond back from the village yet? No, sir, not yet. What bell is that? Bell, sir? Hey, you can hear it, can't you? Sounds like a church bell. Listen. No, I, I can't hear anything, sir. Excuse me, there's a telegram just come for you. Read it. No, I said read it. It's from Mr. Merton, sir. Well? Contacted Max. About time. Took him three days to do it. Anything more? Promises visit you next week. We'll be, we'll be with you soon. Regards, David. What's the matter, Janet? You afraid of my brother? Oh, no, sir. Just what happened between you two? Now, now, you needn't be afraid to tell me the truth. Oh, nothing, sir. I swear it. He was a nice man. I, I mean, he... I mean... He... It's that bell again. 
Surely you can hear it. No, sir. I can't hear anything, sir. Excuse me, sir. What's the matter with the girl? Was a nice man. Anybody would think he was dead. There is a bell tolling. I'm not imagining it. Funeral bell. Funeral bell. You're sure he suspected nothing? No, madam. I told him I couldn't hear the bell. Oh, shall I put this away? Yes, in the wardrobe. I'll get rid of it later. That'll be all, Janet. Where's Mr. Hammond? Oh, I think he's still downstairs, madam. Good. You can bring us tea now, Janet. Yes, madam. Richard, I've just seen the telegram from David. Isn't it good news? I'm surprised. David wasted the money sending it. But you told him to. I've asked you before not to lie to me. What do you mean? Max is dead. Isn't he? Yes. How did you know? I found your hat. Felt the veil. You forgot about the bell. I heard it. Funeral bell. We meant to tell you later, but I was afraid the shock might be too much for you. You see how well I'm taking it? No hysteria? No breakdown? Now tell me, how did he die? Tell me. There was a quarrel in the kitchen, just as I told you. In the middle of it, Max went into a fit of coughing. Far worse than anything we know before. David went down to the village to get a doctor. He came as fast as he could, but it was too late. There was nothing we could do. I wasn't told. Please forgive us, Richard. We did what we thought was best. If Dr. Palmer had been here, I'm sure he would have agreed. You even send someone up to my room to make sure that I didn't get out? Yes, Clem. I didn't imagine it. But weren't people surprised I didn't attend the funeral? They understood. Things we could have done. Things we should have done. I spoke to him about Palmer. The doctors, he said. Oh, why didn't I insist? Richard, no one knew how ill he really was. If it hadn't happened now, it would have come the next month or the month after, darling. Don't. There's no one now but you. Clem? Sir? I'm going for a drive. Is Mrs. Hammond coming too, sir? I'm going alone.
Any particular direction, sir? Turn left at the gates, towards the village. Nice day, sir. Yeah. Drive me to the cemetery, Clem. I'm going to visit my brother's grave. Step up here, sir. Straight in front of you. They put up a temporary cross. I didn't touch him that night, sir. I didn't know about his heart. You didn't kill him, Clem. He'd been killing himself for years. Fetch me some flowers. But the grave's covered with them already, sir. Fetch some flowers, I said. Have you been ordered not to leave me? No, sir, but I... Uh... Then get some. At once. Very good, sir. Mrs. Hammond. In her room, sir. I think she's dressing for dinner. I think she... Richard. What's the matter, darling? You don't look well. You don't expect a dead man to look well, do you? What do you mean? I've just been to the cemetery. You forgot I could read with these. Uh, Max is buried there, isn't he? But it's my name on the cross. What does it feel like to be a widow? A rich widow? All those papers I signed, all those checks. Everything made out to you, isn't it? You and David. Even Max, he must have known. He died too soon to get his share. You're wrong. Let me go. I think you've both been very clever. But You've taken everything from me, including my life. But I'm not dead. You'll have to adjust that, won't you? Well, it shouldn't be too difficult now. There'll be no questions, no one to know. But well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you kill me? Oh, you fool. i tell you why they did it. To save you living out the rest of your life in a mental home. It's not true. I don't believe it. Oh, Dr. Palmer should have told you what he told me. Then you'd believe me. They wanted to put you away. They said you might become dangerous, but I wouldn't let them. I love you far too much to let you spend the rest of your life in one of those places. Max knew what I was doing, and he agreed with me. I want to take care of you myself. Nobody can interfere. That's what I want, for your sake. Of course, we had to take the business over. It would have come to me anyhow as soon as you were incapable. In 
the meantime, I must have money to look after you, to give you what you needed. Oh, if you only knew what agonies I've been through. I don't think I could have gone on much longer keeping it from you. Everything was so clear a minute ago. Now Nothing matters anymore. All I ask is that you trust me. If only I could. Tell me you do. Tell me that you trust me. I trust you. Richard, dinner's ready, darling. I've got a surprise for you. David's here. He's just arrived. Will you come down right away? Coming. They must kill me now because I know. If they let me escape, I could tell someone about the grave. How will it come? A sudden blow from behind. A knife. Something more subtle. Poison. Poison. I found a new burgundy at Fortescue's the other day. I brought some for you to try. I think you'll find it's got a flavour all its own. Taste it, Richard. I've lost my taste for wine. Strange thing, but colour makes all the difference to taste. When you can't see a thing... I'll serve the hors d'oeuvre. Hey, what's the matter? Where's Janet? I gave her the night off. She's gone to the cinema with Clem, I think. Clem, too? Really, darling. I think we can do without them for one night. Yes, of course. You know, this is really delicious, Richard. You don't know what you're missing. I'll give you some mayonnaise. I made it exactly the way you like it, with plenty of mustard. David? Uh, not for me, thank you. What's the matter? Matter? Why aren't you eating? <laughs> I intend to. I just don't like mayonnaise, that's all. I, I think there's too much mustard even for me. I'll have mine without mayonnaise, thank you. I'm sorry, darling. I'll get you another plate. I'll get it. But Rich... And don't fuss, Christiane. I like doing things myself. Anything the matter, Richard? We're getting quite worried about you. Thought I had someone outside. You're imagining things, old man. Of course I am. Dr. Palmer told you to expect that, didn't he? One of the symptoms of my illness. No need to get excited, Richard. Doctors aren't infallible. They may have made a mistake. Perhaps they're not the only ones, David. What do you mean by that? Oh, David, David, you must listen to reason. Richard, David. Coming. Come on, Richard, we mustn't keep Christian waiting. Richard. You've forgotten that plate. I'm worried about you, Richard. You haven't eaten a thing. Isn't that just like a woman? Worried if you eat too little, worried if you eat too much. Wish I had someone to worry about me. Here's your coffee. Christiana. Anything the matter? Just thinking that man, man in my position, 
blind. I'm sorry, what did you say? Like Bob's Harley. Christiana, I'm glad. I've been thinking it all over, and it, it's a relief to me that you and David feel the great weight's been lifted off my back. Yes, I, I do it. You're both so, so capable. Just learning to appreciate how I should be grateful to be alive. The explosion could easily have killed me. I mean, what's, what, what does money matter to me? As long as I'm taken care of. Christiane, it hasn't been easy for you. I don't think that I don't know or appreciate. I, you need a rest. I was thinking perhaps you could leave me with a nurse for a while. Get away and see your family, perhaps. Do you good. Well, what do you say? I wouldn't dream of leaving you. Of course you wouldn't, Richard. Tell me, David. You're going to settle with the group? I take it you will. The end of Apollo. Last ambition. You better drink the coffee, Richard, before it gets too cold. Of course. The group won't suppress the Apollo, Richard. They'll they'll go ahead with the manufacture and we'll get a share of the profits. That's what you want, isn't it? Never mind, darling. I'll get you another cup. And don't bother. I don't want any.
Cristóbal! Comment vous sentez-vous Il vient de se réveiller. What's happening? Where am I? Vous êtes anglais. Il est anglais. Why are you speaking French? Bonjour, mes sœurs. Comment va-t-il Il est anglais, docteur, et il est aveugle. Good morning, sir. How do you do? Oh, doctor, I must talk to you. My name is Richard Hammond. Uh, there's been a plot to murder me. Excuse me, imagine, come on. Oh, why are you all speaking French? Look, where am I? Where am I? Where? Hôpital à Francheville. Francheville. In France? Oui, France. En France. Welcome to France. How the... What? Il faut que vous mangiez. Eat. No, no, no. Telephone. I, I must telephone the police. Telephone! Il veut sans doute prévenir ses amis. Mais bien sûr. Votre femme a déjà été avertie. She telephoned me. Your wife. No, no, no. Not my wife. Not my wife. Il m'a expliqué que la suite de l'accident qui l'a rendu aveugle, il est resté un peu détraqué. Mais t'en fous? Oh, mad? No, I'm not mad. You mustn't believe that. I'm not mad. I'm not mad! Your wife comes cet après-midi, uh, this afternoon. No, no, no! Il faut vous oh. reposer, sinon vous ne pourrez pas quitter l'hôpital. Laissons-le tranquille, je l'examinerai plus tard. Oui, docteur. Hôpital Sainte-Thérèse Ah, bonjour, Madame Blanchard. Non, le docteur n'est pas ici aujourd'hui. Demain à 3 heures, il viendra. Si vous voulez bien passer. Comment Non, Madame. Téléphone, please. Un moment, Monsieur. Oui, téléphone. Non, Madame. Oui, monsieur. Mais Monsieur, qu'est-ce que vous faites le téléphone. Give me that phone. Let me go, you idiots. I've got something important to say. They mustn't find me here. Ah, oh, ces Anglais. No. Ils sont tous un peu fous. No, 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 don't you understand? They'll kill me. Look, get somebody who can understand. The police. Now listen to me, listen to me. We oui, listen, monsieur. Calm me. Look, my wife and partner pretended I was mad. Clem and Janet believed it. Even my own brother thought they were trying to help. That's why I let them bring me to France to keep me out of an asylum. You know why they really brought me here? So that I'd be cut off from everyone at home. So that I could disappear when they wanted me to. No one would know. So that they could take everything I possessed. Uh, you understand, don't you? Oui, monsieur, oui. No, 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 no. no don't send me to sleep. Not yet. There's more to explain. Uh, I never suspected. Never suspected. 
You see, they found a house here in France and made me believe it was my own house in Cornwall. They had plenty of time after the accident to alter it, make it similar. Even the garden. It's not difficult to fool a blind man. Max's death gave him the chance to get rid of me altogether. You must tell the police. Get hold of Clem. He'll help me when he knows the truth. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I can sleep now. I'm so relieved. So grateful. I'm very grateful. Et à l'avenir, il faudrait les surveiller plus strictement. Does he speak English? No, but I told the doctor what terrible damage the explosion did to his mind. Nous ferons très attention, docteur. You be careful. Darling. Bonjour, madame. We've come to take you home. Everything would be all right now. You really had us worried, Richard. Sure I did. Must have been very nerve-wracking for you. You'll make certain I don't escape again, won't you? I think we ought to go, Christiane. Nous allons partir tout de suite, docteur. Emmenez le la voiture. Oui, docteur. You can sit with me in the back, darling. À l'arrière. Oui, madame. Clem? Is Clem here? No, David is driving. Clem's run out, has he? No! I'll sit in the front with David. Au revoir, Doctor. Au revoir, Monsieur. Au revoir, Doctor. Et merci infiniment. Il n'y a pas de quoi, Madame. With Madame, get better. Soon, get better. You don't have to kill me. I promise to keep my mouth shut. I won't cause any trouble. Shut up. Not so fast, David. You're frightened, aren't you, David? It's not going to be easy, is it? Look, I'm legally dead already. What if I give you my word? Now, I've never gone back on my word, have I, David? For God's sake, shut up! Christian, you should be satisfied. You've got your revenge, haven't you? You got the man you think you're in love with. You got my money in the factory. Isn't that enough? Be careful, David. Well, answer me, can't you? Say something! Say something, damn you! Yeah. <laughs> 
Christian! 